All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about covalent bonding, which is different from ionic bonding in that we have different types of elements involved. So if a compound only has nonmetals in it, so two or three nonmetals, we would say that the type of bonding is covalent. So we're dealing with only stuff that's to the right of the staircase on our periodic table and, of course, hydrogen. Um, how it's different is that the electrons are going to be shared between the two nonmetals um, and what's attracting them to each other. Um, each atom has a positive nucleus surrounded by um, negative electrons. So the negative valence electrons in one atom will be attracted to the positive nucleus in the other atom. Okay, and vice versa. So we still have that positive and negative attraction. We just don't have any ions that are created because we don't have something that wants to lose and something that wants to gain to make ions. All right, we just have two things that have pretty high electronegativities. So um, they're both going to kind of just compromise and they're going to share their valence electrons with each other. Okay. So, so let's look at this example here. Um, to draw a Lewis dot diagram for a covalent bond, let's start with chlorine. Chlorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons, right? So now hydrogen has one valence electron. So I see that chlorine has this one single electron on the left side. There's this one open space for bonding to occur. So what's going to happen is, I'm just going to change my color so it's easy to see, this hydrogen can actually stick itself right here. And its one valence electron can go right here. So now this in the middle, I want to keep my color so that these are two shared electrons. So it's a covalent bond. So instead of the hydrogen giving away and the chlorine taking, their valence shells kind of just overlap each other and they, and they stick together and form a covalent bond. Okay, so let's look at, whoops, sorry. A diagram of this. Um, so guys, this diagram is just showing how um, the two positive nuclei, they're going to, they're going to repel each other. So the atoms aren't going to get super close when they form a covalent bond. But because of the negative electron shells in the other atoms, they're going to be attracted to that opposite positive charge. So we have electrons that are negative and nuclei that are positive, and that's going to hold everything together and form a covalent bond. Okay, so we see that there's some sort of distance between the atoms. Um, that distance is because the positive nuclei can't get too close together, um, but they get close enough where the energy is at the lowest it can be, and we form a stable bond. Okay. So how many pairs of electrons can be shared? So um, this is kind of just like showing you how it works before we get into like how to easily draw compounds in a step-by-step -step process. So let's go back to this so you can see it. Um, so chlorine has seven valence electrons. So you want to think like how many more does it need to be stable or get full? It needs one more to get to eight, right? So when I form a bond between my two chlorines, right? There's my one chlorine. I'm going to change my color. Here's my other chlorine. One, two, three, four, five six, seven. So each chlorine atom shared one electron with the other. So this is a single bond. 
and a single bond is when you have two electrons shared. It's one from each atom, so it's one pair of electrons. All right, let's look at O2 next. So um, oxygen has six valence electrons. So it needs two to be stable, right? So when I draw my oxygen, I'm going to draw two electrons in the middle. And when my other atom of oxygen comes to attach to it, it's going to share two back. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if you look at what that did, guys, each one of them sharing two, I have this oxygen having a full valence shell of eight, and I have this oxygen having a full valence shell of eight. But they did that by creating a double bond, which means I have four electrons shared, two from each atom. So I have two pairs. Okay, and finally, guys, this is as big as you're going to get. Um, nitrogen has five valence electrons, so it needs three more to get to eight. Right? So the nitrogens, instead of sharing one or two with each other, they actually need to share three with each other. So one, two, three, four, five. And this one is going to share. One, two, three, four, five. So I know that kind of looks funny, but when we do our circles, this nitrogen now has eight valence electrons, and this nitrogen has now eight valence electrons. And it did that by making a triple bond, which means there's six electrons shared between the two. They each shared three. So three pairs of electrons shared. So when we get into the rules for drawing covalent compounds, um, this is what we're talking about when we talk about making single, double, or triple bonds. Okay? All right. So let's go to the rules. All right? So for drawing simple molecules, whoops, sorry guys. And if I haven't said it already, the word molecules we're only supposed to use for covalent compounds. Um, a lot of times, just like with the word substance, um, probably in years before this, we've used the word substance to describe everything. Now we know that substance is something very specific. It's the same thing with molecules. Not everything is a molecule. You can't call NaCl a molecule. You can only call a compound a molecule if it's made up of covalent bonds. It has only nonmetals in it. Anyways, um, the first thing you do is count the total valence electrons for all the atoms. Okay, so let's, let's just kind of go to example one. We'll do that together and we'll go through all the rules. So, um, so count all the valence electrons. So nitrogen has five valence electrons and each hydrogen has one valence electron. So that's a total of eight electrons that needs to be in my picture. Okay, the second rule says, put the atom there's only one of in the center. So for this compound, there's only one nitrogen. That means that that's gonna be my center molecule, my center atom. Um, place single bonds between the atoms. So I have three hydrogens to attach to this nitrogen. We always start off by connecting them with single bonds. So instead of drawing like two electrons here, guys, I can just show a bond as a line. And I know that each of those lines has two electrons in it, one from the nitrogen, one from the hydrogen. They're each sharing one with each other. Okay. 
So now the fourth rule says, make all atoms have an octet, except for hydrogen, B, or BE. So B and BE are not in this compound, um, but hydrogen is. Think about why hydrogen doesn't need to have an octet. Hydrogen only has one electron shell. It's in the first period on the periodic table. So how many valence electrons fill in that shell? Two. So hydrogen is actually filled up when it has two valence electrons, not eight. Okay, so if I look at each of these hydrogens, they each have a single bond attached to them, which means they each have two valence electrons. So they're all good, they're all full. My nitrogen, I need to fill up. So nitrogen has three bonds around it. Each bond has two electrons, so that's two, four, six electrons. To make eight, I need to add two more electrons to the nitrogen. Okay, so now rule number five, count the electrons and see if this matches the original number. So I have two, four, six, eight. Does that match that? Yes. So at this point, guys, I can stop at rule number five. I don't need to worry about six, seven, or eight because this is a simple molecule and what I did works. Okay, so um, what I do want to show you guys some wording that you'll see. Um, this is called up here, this is called a lone pair of electrons. So these electrons are both nitrogen's electrons. They're not participating in a bond where these would be called a bonding pair of electrons. And we're going to see this kind of phrasing come along later. Um, but, but for now, you'll just see that that's what it's called. All right. Um, okay. I want you guys to, um, to try water on your own. And I'm going to go over that with you, um, with you tomorrow. And I want you also to try carbon dioxide on your own. I'm gonna let you know right now um, that carbon dioxide is a bit of a challenge. Um, so what I want you to think about before you get going is, um, is how many each of these things needs to get filled up. So each oxygen has six. How many more does each one need to get full? So, so you might be dealing hint, hint with some sort of like multiple bond there. Okay. So give those two a try on your own and we'll look at them again tomorrow.